Sukkot, the last annual feast. Sukkot. We're going to go back to Leviticus 23. So I'm going to show you all where this is, of course, in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And this is also called the Feast of Tabernacles. This is going to be Leviticus 23, verses 33, pretty much down to the end of the chapter, which is verse 44. And so what we see with Sukkot is that he tells us in verse 33, it's the 15th day of the seventh month. And for seven days, we to observe it. There's a, a, a first day, it's a holy convocation. Don't do any kind of ordinary work. Then we bring an offering made by fire for seven days. And then there's a mysterious eighth day. He said it's seven days, but there's another day tacked on to the end. We'll talk about that in a minute. On that eighth day, according to verse 36, you would also have a holy convocation, bring an offering made by fire. So we get together on the first and the eighth days, just like in 11 bread, we got together on the first and the seventh days. We have assemblies, we, we unite. Now he tells us on the first day in verse 40 that we're to wave branches, palm fronds, and, and river willows, and we're supposed to wave before him the fruit of the land. So you might not have palm fronds and river willows, you live in Virginia, but what do you have in your, in your yard? Wave branches from your yard, you, you're dedicating yourself and, and, and all you have back to him. Some people order these things from Israel, but it doesn't represent your yard. It doesn't represent what you have when you do that. You understand what I mean? The point is, he wants you to wave the fruit of the land before him, your fruit of the land. You may not grow fruit, but you may have a bush. You may have a tree. Amen. Wave that before him. Amen? And if you join us, because of course we have services on all these days to make sure that, that God's people are empowered to obey. We want everyone to tell you to do something and then we can't empower you to do it, right? Then you join us, we'll have branches as well. If you maybe live in an apartment, you'll have the branches. We'll have some branches for you. Amen? So that's what we're supposed to do. But in verse 42, he also says, live in Sukkot. That is the plural of Sukkah for seven days. Now, what is a Sukkah? A Sukkah is a temporary dwelling. That's it. That's the whole definition, temporary dwelling. That's it. It could be a tent. It could be a lean-to. Um, it could be a booth. Historically or traditionally in Israel, it's a booth. And people say, oh, you got to make it like this. You got to make it like that. And you have to have an open air so that you can see the sky. But it rains in Sukkot in Virginia, so I discourage you from doing that. <laughs> it always rains in Sukkot in Virginia. In Israel, there's a rainy season and a dry season. Virginia doesn't have that. It rains whenever it wants to in Virginia. And Virginia always wants to rain in Sukkot. Always. Sometimes we have monsoons during Sukkot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you want to be prepared. We, we put up a waterproof tent so we can actually observe it. And I actually had a vision. You sure showed up at a camp. And there were tents. They weren't booths. There were tents. And this was during Sukkot. He gave me this vision like two days before Sukkot. There were tents lined up. And he stood at the edge of the camp. And when he came to the edge, everybody came out of their tent and stood in front of their tent. And he said, my faithful ones. And I said, thank you, Lord. So one, you accept the tent. And two, you're serious about Sukkot. Let me go get a tent. Like, <laughs> like it's serious to you. But it, it doesn't have to be traditional. People will Critic, oh, it's not like it's not, none of that's in the scripture. The scripture says have a super. Super is a temporary dwelling. That's it. And you do stuff in it. You enjoy the Lord. You take two days off, the first and the eighth day. But the other days, you eat in there. You you do homework in there. You might give your laptop in there. You hopefully you worship and you pray in there. You have dinner with your family and friends. Like you do all types of stuff. Because the point is that you're trying to spend time with him. Mm -hmm. And invite him into every aspect of your life. Amen. Amen. 